Are you looking for more energy, better skin, improved mental clarity, increased level of sleep, improved oral hygiene, then you're in the right place. Because today we're going over six foods that everyone should avoid. So welcome to another episode of Chasing Wealth with Chase Wheeler. I am your host, Chase Wheeler. And honestly, I am not the biggest fan of myself today because of this list of six foods that everyone should avoid. As I look at the list, I've probably had four of six of these foods, which just kind of you don't even realize like you're just eating normal what you think is normal things and because it has a maybe a gluten-free label or a dairy-free or or, or sugar-free um, you think it's good whenever it's uh it, it just isn't so i'm excited to get in this list here uh, before we get started uh this is this is going to be our series chasing wealth with chase wheeler i'm chase wheeler i just said that already but much more of a podcast, much more of a conversational style. Um, I'm going to try to go live whenever I figure out how to do so. So that'll be cool. I'm excited to get into this series as well. I'm just going to come to you with, you know, five to 10 minute videos about, about what I'm thinking of the day. This is, this is my life. I, I think about gut health all the time. Um, I think about health and fitness all the time. So I'm just going to come to you with, you know, about one, maybe two topics if I'm feeling real good today. So let's go ahead. Let's dive in um, again, more energy, better sleep, better skin, improved mental health, improved oral health too. You don't want cavities. You don't want bad breath and everything. And, and the reason that foods can do all this is because right, they're going to feed our, you guess it, our gut microbiome. You all know, or if you don't know, if this is your first time here, I'm a, I'm a gut health, uh, kind of guy, a gut health, I wouldn't want to say specialist, but enthusiast. Um, I think that gut health is the center for, for everything, right? Because, um, and the to saying on topic for today is that food gets digested, it gets processed through our gut. And so that's going to help, um, all those areas that we talked about the gut and the brain have direct connection. The gut, uh, basically sends out nutrients and molecules to your body to repair, to recover, to do all build, to do all the things that it needs to do, right? There's no, um, now that I think about it, right? You have your your umbilical cord when you're a baby, everything gets first started with the gut here. Um, so a little bit weird, maybe a side, side note right there, but that's what it is. Um, as we get through this list, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, do my best to tell you kind of why, what foods, are going to contain these things and, and why we, we shouldn't be having them. So, um, we'll go ahead and, and the, let me know below. Um, do you have some foods that you already know are bad for you? I know, I know I like, like, obviously we're going to go sugar. We're going to go dairy. We're going to go uh, a gluten for some of us. So let me know below, which ones do you have a hard time with? Mine is going to be sugar and dairy. I've already been gluten free for five years. I have a video about it. I can link to it but definitely, um, staying, staying away from sugar, staying away from dairy. It's a bit challenging for me, especially when you're limited to a certain diet. Um, so let's get started. Number one, we're going to go with, uh, sweeteners, sweeteners, like agave nectar, uh, aspartame, corn syrup, sucralose, and white sugar, right? Uh, agave nectar is going to contain high fructose content. Uh, which can contribute to metabolic disease when consumed in excess. Artificial sweetener. Aha, you think that you're being healthy by uh, by getting a diet soda or sugar-free products, but they're just cons they're just filled with uh, artificial sweetener, which if you it, it is bad for your brain, it's bad for your neurological health, and has linked to uh, headaches. So if you've even been drinking a bunch of diet sugar-free products, eating much sugar-free products and you have headaches, that's something to consider. Uh, corn syrup, I think maybe we all are familiar right there. High fructose corn syrup is, is going to be awful for you in terms of uh, metabolic disease, in terms of increasing risk of chronic disease like type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Another familiar one with us is going to be white sugar. These are all in, in group one. These are types of sweeteners that we should be avoiding. White sugar, uh, white sugar is is going to lack um, nutrients. It's just going to be excess calories, right? It's not going to do much for our body. Uh, it's going to have us gain weight, uh, um, 
decrease the quality of our oral health, lead to tooth decay, and in some cases, increase risk of, of chronic diseases. Um, so, you know, this is all in moderation, right? Like, sure, you accomplish a big goal, you have a big feat, you can go go ahead and, and have a, a diet soda and some candy for the day, but you just, everything in moderation. You just don't want it to become a, a habit. Um, and some general reasons why consuming these these excess sweeteners excess sweeteners are bad for you bad for your health it's going to have caloric impact so empty calories um blood sugar is going to have blood sugar spikes and crashes and spikes and crashes and the more of those you go through in your lifetime that is a, a indicator of of poor longevity so um you know bad for for your health long term uh, metabolic effects, including fatty liver disease and insulin resistance, dental health, you're going to have to pay more in dental health care because of uh, tooth decay, and cavities and, uh, you know, uh, what do you call those things? Root canals and all that stuff. I, I hate the dentist. So uh, it tastes preferences is going to change. The more of these you have, the more your body's going to crave them. The more good stuff you have, the more your body craves good stuff. So that's why I like rewarding yourself every once in a while not daily right once a month twice a month is fine um, and then getting your taste buds back to where they, they crave those good foods so that's group number one uh, group number two food foods number two that we should avoid is going to be somewhat similar is going to be foods with uh, added sugar like sports drinks uh, soda flavored flavored snacks like oatmeal granola bars flavored yogurt um, some of those are tricky, right? Because you think you're being healthy with a granola bar when really it has a bunch of sugar in it. And you think that, oh, yogurt is good for my microbiome, but it's strawberry flavored and it has 30 gram, I don't know, 20 something grams of sugar in it. Those are just, it's not only going to offset the good effects that you're going to get from, from eating yogurt, from eating maybe a granola with whole grains in it. Um, but it's also going to feed those unhealthy bacteria in your gut. And we want to avoid doing that. So these foods are going to have a lot of the same, same uh, negative impacts on our body, such as excess calor calories and weight gain, blood sugar spikes, um, dental health, insufficient satiety. So these foods are going to lead you to feel more hungry more often. Uh, metabolic health, inflammatory response. These are going to trigger your inflammatory responses like crazy sore joints, you know, you wake up and you're sore for no reason. You didn't re like maybe you worked out, but not that hard. Um, these are signs that you're inflamed, right? Um, personal story is towards the end of my sports career. Uh, when I was first getting those like weird signs of something's wrong with my gut, one of them was that uh, Achilles tendonitis and I was a sprinter jumper. So you wear these spikes. Um, so it's not unusual to have these kind of soreness, but it was crazy. My, I thought my Achilles was going to snap and it was my body being so inflamed from just the BS that I was eating. So you want to pay attention to that. Um, sugar addiction is a real thing. Uh, um, yeah. And misleading health claims that we talked about is going to pretend to be healthy, even though they're not. So food group number three, food, third food is going to be oil, such as canola, hydrogenated oil, vegetable oil, shortening and margarine. Now fats and oils do play a crucial role in our health. Um, our brain, right? Our hormones are made out of fats. So you need those, but, but healthy fats. So, you know, trans fat is going to be unhealthy. These are hydrogenated vegetable oils, shortening and margarines contain trans fat, uh, basically artificial, they're created through, through they're created. The ones that are liquid at room temperature are going to be bad. Basically, um, they're going to maybe minus, uh, some olive oil there, but they're going to raise LDL, bad cholesterol and lower good cholesterol. It's going to have negative impact on your cardiovascular health. Uh, we know, you know, how many people are, are, are seemingly, um, if not dropping dead, suffering from, from random, um, heart related issues. Seems like it's been a lot recently. Another, um, thing is inflammation and oxidative stress. Um, high omega six fatty acids, which, which you need a balance of omega threes and omega sixes, but, um, 
high omega-6 can lead to inflammation and health issues. Uh, so a ton of other, other uh, negative effects from those, but we'll move on here to food number four. And that's going to be refined, <laughs> refined grains like white flour. Um, so refined grains like white flour have undergone the process of removing the bran and germ layers, leaving them, leaving only the endosperm. So this process strips the grain of important nutrients and fiber. Um, and fiber is really going to be key here. And when you look at this list of sweeteners um, and refined, refined, <laughs> refined grains, uh, all the fiber is gone. But when you consider something like um, fruits, right? When you consider stuff like, like whole grains, um, whole wheat, they're going to have fiber with them, which means that the sugar is going to be processed slower. So you won't have those spikes and crashes in blood sugar. It's going to move through your system more easily. And fiber is going to be what feeds the healthy bacteria in our gut. So, um, avoiding these refined grains, right? Lack of fiber is huge. Empty calories is going to lead to weight gain and obesity. Uh, it's going to impact your nutrient absorption because there's not many nutrients in there. Um, so settle for healthier alternatives. Like I said, uh, whole wheat, brown rice, quinoa, oats, barley, um, to provide you with the necessary nutrients and dietary fiber. So the fifth item is one of my favorites maybe to talk about here. And one of the ones that I have the maybe weakest problems with, and that's ultra processed foods. So Ultra processed foods are going to contain additives, preservatives, and artificial ingredients. These food typically high in calories, unhealthy fats, and sugar, sodium, while lacking essential nutrients. Um, this is tough one because as someone who's kind of always on the go, you're going to reach for a packaged Nutrigrain bar. Um, you're going to reach for some packaged protein bar or whatever it is and be like, okay, well, it's a protein bar or it's a whole grain nutri nutrient bar. So we're good, right? but flip it over, read the back. And the rule here is five ingredients or less, five ingredients or less on your packaged goods and only ingredients that you can pronounce. Those are good, good rules to follow to avoid the ultra processed food diet, um, is, which is going to be, as we said, high in sugar, high in healthy, unhealthy fats, low in fiber, um, and uh, gonna have lead to gut health problems, cancer risk, impact on on mood and mental health, and increased dependency and cravings on highly palatable, sugary, salty foods. All those stuff that comes in in packages are formulated in a way. All these unhealthy foods, right? You smell something. Oh, going back to number three, some some fried chicken, boy. It, you feel me? You walk in the house. Mom's making fried chicken. It's a good night. I'm never turning that down. You feel me? But like, um, not even, I'm, uh, that's better than going to like, we'll, we'll change the example here. You go into Wingstop. Smells delicious. Um, but all these foods are kind of the, the, the Cokes, the, the flavored yogurt, the uh, processed foods in the package. They're all made to smell good. Kim, like, Scientists, scientists make these to smell good, taste good, and make you want more. They're they're literally made to be addictive. So uh, watch out for all of that. Um, and the sixth and final, again, <laughs> one of my favorites, <sighs> is cured meats, man. Bacon, hot dogs, right? That includes like turkey bacon and all that stuff. A lot of these meats have undergone various methods of preservation. Oh, beef jerky is included in here you think you're healthy because it's just beef but um you know it's gone preservate preser preservation flavor enhancement and cooking um, and while these can be enjoyed in moderation like many other things our health concern associated with these uh consuming these regularly so they're always going to have a super high sodium content that's kind of one of the ways to preserve them but that's going to lead to high blood pressure heart disease and stroke they're going to be made with additives and preservatives such as uh, nitrites and nitrates. And one of the things that my family has done uh, really for me, to be, if, if I'm being honest, is tried to find like a, a bacon or whatever with, with no nitrates and no nitrites. They have it. It's going to be healthier for you than 
the ones with those preservatives. Um, processed and red meat can be linked to cancer. Um, certain types of cancer, certain types of cancer, in particular uh, colorectal cancer. Um, so that's a big, a big worry for for people with inflammatory bowel disease. Um, um, it's going to be made with unhealthy fats. High, again, high caloric density, impact on gut health. Um, it's going to contribute to insulin resistance, and uh, so some some alternative healthier options are going to be poultry, uh, fish, legumes, and nuts. So these can provide some of the essential nutrients that you get from these uh, meats without the health risk associated. So that's my list of, of six foods. It's kind of six food groups that, excuse me, everyone should avoid. Um, again, let me know below which one do you, do you struggle with most? I think I'm looking at this list here and I know like instinctively sweeteners are bad. The one that took me maybe the, the hardest to get over and to understand that it wasn't good for me was cured meats, um, beef jerky, just because um, I've had a bad experience with it recently. Again, I tried it again for whatever reason. Um, it just seems like it shouldn't be that bad. It's just like like beef. Um, so anyway, that that's going to be mine that I would put below. Um, so what would be yours? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you for making it to the end. I'm on a, I'm on a huge mission here to make it to 1,000 subscribers. Um, and more than anything, it's to help kind of uh make this into some sort of sort of uh substantial uh business that i could that i could maintain and really the goal is to help like m the lessons that i've learned the things that i'm learning every day i want to help help everyone else that may be struggling with what to eat how to exercise you know what to do when you're injured how to tell if you have gut problems i want to be able to share all that information so that's my my mission here so liking, subscribing, sharing, all that is very helpful. Um, and then, you know, we have much more like this. So I'll see you on our next video. Welcome to the circle, it's the winning team.